Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on taking a closer look at stacks. So essentially stacks are basically what is created when you deploy a template. So we have already worked with templates and you guys saw in templates we can define all of the different resources that are going to be provisioned based on what we're trying to do. So essentially a stack is created by deploying that template because within a stack you are able to manage all of the resources that are within it. So for example, let's say if we created a template to deploy an entire web server including a VPC, security groups, internet gateways and so on. So all of that is contained within a stack and that's, you are able to manage that entire infrastructure through a stack. So if you update or delete a stack it affects all of the resources that are contained within that. So let's say if we want to change a stack. Uh, let's say if we've deployed a single EC2 instance and we want to change it to a, another EC2 instance or we want to add it to an auto scaling group. So essentially changing is a fairly straightforward process in terms of you have a, your original stack which might be an EC2 instance and you want to create a chain set, meaning you want to change something in it. So let's say you want to add a add it to a auto scaling group. So that auto scaling group is basically your change set. And the good thing about CloudFormation is, is when you define a change set or when you define any changes to an already existing deployed stack, before deploying those changes, it allows you to see all of the components that you're trying to change. So let's say for example you have an you have an entire web server that's deployed through a stack and the web server contains a VPC it contains an internet gateway auto scaling group launch configurations and 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 whatnot. So let's say that if you were to change one piece of service let's say if you were to change the EC2 instance or if you were to add in a database within that application server infrastructure when you get towards the end of before deploying it, it allows you to see that you are only adding a server or you're only adding a RDS database. So it allows you to see what information or what aspects of the infrastructure you're trying to change before you actually update the entire stack. So if you're happy with the changes, then you can go ahead and update the stack. So it's a fairly straightforward process and we'll go through that in our upcoming lab. Then you also have something called nested stacks. Now nested stacks are created as part of other stacks and as your infrastructure grows, which you might want to declare some components in multiple templates. So you can separate out these components or these common components and create dedicated templates for them. And then use the resource in your template to reference other templates creating nested stacks. So for example, assume that you have a load balancer configuration that you use for most of your stacks. Now instead of copying and pasting that same configuration in all of your templates, you can create a dedicated template specifically for that load balancer. Then all you have to do is just reference that resource to reference the template from within other templates. Now nested stacks can themselves contain other nested stacks resulting in basically a pretty complicated hierarchy. So the root stack is the top level stack to which all nested stacks ultimately belong. And then in addition, each nested stack has an immediate parent one. So for the first level of nested stacks, the root stack is also the parent stack. So for example, now the stack A that you guys see is basically the root stack for all of the other ones. For stack B, stack A is both the parent stack as well as the root stack. And then it goes on down. So for example, for stack D, C would be the parent and so on. Now it's recommended that you use nested stacks to declare common components. But keep in mind that certain stack operations such as any updates should be initiated from the root stack rather than performed directly on the nested stacks. So it's common, it's always good practice. So let's say if you are deploying cloud formation templates throughout your organization and as your organization grows, let's say you are opening up a new office. So rather than copying and pasting some of the common configurations such as VPCs or load balancers or security groups, you can have 
stag templates, which would then become nested stags. So rather than copying and pasting the code or writing it all over again, you can simply just reference your nested stags to create that same configuration across your entire organization. And then you also have something called stack sets. Now they allow you to extend the functionality of stacks by enabling you to create, update, and even delete stacks across multiple accounts and regions within a single operation. So basically you can use your admin account and you can define and manage a CloudFormation template and use the template as a basis for provisioning stacks into selected target accounts across specific regions. So basically all of the resources included in each stack are defined by the stack sets CloudFormation template. And as you create the stack set, you can specify the template to use as well as, as well as any parameters and capabilities that template requires. So after you've defined the stack set, you can create, update, delete in the target accounts and regions that you want or that you specify. Now keep in mind that a stack set is a regional resource. So if you create a stack set in one region, you cannot see it or change it in other regions. Then you have stack instances, which is basically a reference to a stack in a target account within a region. So an instance can exist without a stack. So for example, if the stack could not be created for some reason, the stack instance shows the reason for the stack creation failure. And the instance is associated usually with only one stack. So the figure you guys see on the right hand side basically shows the logical relationship between stack sets, stack operations, and stacks. So when you update a stack, so when you update a stack set, all associated stack instances are updated throughout all accounts and regions. So there's many different operations that you are able to perform on stack sets. For example, you can create, update, delete stacks, or you can even delete a stack set. Then for each operation, there are multiple options, and we'll go through most of them in the upcoming lab instead in, in, in terms of what options are available for each one of the operations when you're either deleting, creating, or updating stack sets. Then you obviously have those tags and status codes, so you can add tags during a creation and update operations by specifying key and value pairs, which is again the same across most of the AWS resources that you create. You can create key tags and values, along where there's multiple different status codes when you're working with stack sets, it generates them. It lets you know if an operation has succeeded, if it's failed, or if it's currently running, just to give you an update in terms of what's going on. And if you guys have been through some of the previous labs, you guys have noticed after the stack has been deployed or after we deploy the template into a stack, you guys saw that it gives you real-time status codes in terms, of, in terms of if something has failed or if something has succeeded or if something is in process. So I hope you guys got a good overview in terms of what are stacks, what are stack sets, and what are nested stacks, and how we can use them in different situations.